Vivek, what's up, man? How's it going, dude? Great night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that this Republican primary has been over for a long time, but it is over yet again. One more time tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm very sorry to report to you some terrible news. Nikki Haley has won Vermont. Which are the provinces of Ukraine that she couldn't name? These are the ones that actually, uh, their delegates are actually coming in for... Uh... <laughs> So, so the, the Ukrainian delegates voted in that D.C. primary, I think, and that's exactly what we what we saw there. She, she's more or less irrelevant, but she's a representation of what we're up against. And I don't just mean in our own party. I mean a managerial class that pervades both parties. And I think it's going to be the same managerial class that gets Joe Biden out of the way, which I think is actually the trap that we're at risk of now falling into, Benny, is – we're now trained, right, I think, to have some level of complacency, satisfaction about tonight. And so, yes, you say great night. I agree. It is a great night. I think that that's a danger. I think that that kind of attitude can also risk creating a complacency. We got to be insurgent, not incumbent. We have to mm. actually be the upstart, not the people who take victory for granted. Trump in 2016 was that. Our founding fathers were that. And I think that that's the spirit we have to keep alive in 2024 rather than, you know, just making this about defeating Joe Biden, laughing at the old man that can't put sentences together, <laughs> tripping on stairs, all of which is true. All of which you know, the guy who can't stairs. stand a trial somehow is actually or even even be a witness in a trial or somehow competent to run the country. Yeah, we get that Joe Biden is is a joke and is a puppet for the managerial class, but understand that come this summer they're going to move him out of the way it's not him that we're actually running against and so while we're appropriately recognizing even celebrating i think a, a victorious step in the progress i think that we have to not fall into the trap of complacency which i do think in some sense has been laid for us by the other side that wants us to focus on biden when in fact it's going to be somebody else that donald trump is actually running against later this year so you have long uh, said that this is going to be Michelle Obama, potentially, uh, if you were to put money on it. Michelle Obama has come out with an official statement saying, not going to be me. I'm not going to run for president. Then she went and did an interview on British television saying it's not going to be me. Then she tried out David Axelrod to say it's not going to be Michelle Obama. Uh, your thoughts on that? Do you think that's still cloak and dagger? Uh, sleight of the hand? Lady, or do the lady gonna... doth protest too much, me thinks, I think. <laughs> okay. What I would say in this case. And, my, and that might be, you know who's not protesting too much, which lady is not protesting too much, is Hillary Clinton, because she actually wants it. Michelle Obama, I don't think, particularly wants it. I actually kind of believe that she doesn't want it, but I don't think that she's going to have much of a choice in the matter. I'm less in the business, Benny, of predicting which individual it is or isn't going to be. I might be wrong about the Michelle Obama specific prediction, but I bring this up because I care about our own side not falling into the trap of thinking that we've got this in the bag. We're running against Joe Biden. He's a defeatable alternative. Our entire message focused on his individual vulnerabilities from his age to his cognitive deficits, to his son, to his son's cognitive deficits, to his son's corruption, to his own corruption. All that needs to be observed. But if that becomes our focal point, it's like a feint in war, right? A feigned retreat where you're led to a false target when, in fact, you have the rug then pulled out from under you only a matter of months later, which is what I think is coming this summer. And, you know, I think it's one of the things you're good at. I think that it's going to take people who are willing to skate to where the puck is going, name a problem. That's in some ways how you actually avoid that problem. And here that problem would be the element of surprise. If we know that we're not running against Biden, then our whole message needn't be tethered to a Biden-specific message. It can actually be who would have ever thought a message about what our own actual affirmative agenda is. That speech that Trump just gave, I thought was was excellent in that respect. He actually nailed a lot of our own affirmative agenda. He went straight down the list. Drill baby drill, largest mass deportation in history, actually fighting crime in this country, make America great again, what that actually means, great. That's what we need to be talking about. I'd say a little bit less of the of the Biden trashing, not because mm -hmm. It's not justified, not because it's not all true, but to the opposite point, it's because that's actually falling into, I believe, a trap that has been laid that we need to avoid. We need an agenda that we stand for, irrespective of which puppet it is. Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Gavin Newsom, doesn't matter. That's actually how we immunize ourselves against that risk.
So what you saw and what we have been predicting is that this is going to be now a gear shift to a brand new general election, Donald Trump, and that you're going to have now a, a different Trump on the trail. He's been obviously very savage uh, against all of his opponents, and he's been in campaign mode against a Republican primary. And you're going to see a shift. What's that shift going to look like? What's going yeah. to change? You're already starting to see sort of a, a resetting of the table, um, but you've obviously become quite close with Donald Trump and, dare I say, are advising him uh, on a number of issues. Uh, he clearly is listening to you. Uh, what does the shift in the Donald Trump to general election mode look like? Yeah, I, I think of it less as a shift, Benny, but more, you know, you've got different different tenors that you can play, right, as a musician, and, and I think he's going to hit some different keys than he's hit so far. And I think there's a time and place for everything. He's already doing it. Look at that speech he gave yesterday, right after that Supreme Court ruling. I think that's been one of his best yet. I would say one of his best ever yet, actually, because it wasn't particularly about him dancing on anybody's grave. It was actually a tenor of national unity. And I think that was really fitting yesterday. The Supreme Court's ruling was about national unity itself. And I think him delivering that message about national unity, I think, was really fitting for that moment as well. And so I think that that's going to be either in so many words or even if not in so many words, the core message is actually that Donald Trump, not Joe Biden or not anybody else from the other side, is going to be the one who actually unites this country. And I think that that's something that our side needn't be shy about admitting that we want. I think most of us don't want a national divorce. I think most of us do want to live in one nation under God, just as our founding fathers envisioned 250 years ago. True, true, true. And true. so I think Donald Trump is going to be that kind of figure from now through Election Day that revives that spirit of national unity in his own, in his own way. And I think that it's going to be his own authentic way. But I think that less of a shift, but more of an awakening of something that may have been less obvious to people who have watched him in the past, but I know is in his heart and I think is coming out more and more. And, you know, I do think that's the right way to go. And I am fully in support of that message all the way through the general election in November. So it's good night. And uh, I'm glad you had me on. For a, for a few minutes, Benny, before we rock and roll, but thanks for, uh, thanks for doing what you're doing. I know I know that you I know that you are a father to young children and I don't want to I don't want to keep you I have to ask you one more thing I have to ask you one more because ALX broke the news uh, earlier in the call that Elon Musk was meeting potentially with Donald Trump that both their jets landed the same place and that they had that they had a meeting now you're very close with both these guys and you've worked very closely with both these guys and we've talked about Elon Musk publicly and how valuable obviously the X platform is to free speech but also for just the future of the country as a free nation. Um, your thoughts on that meeting? I, don't, I obviously don't want you to reveal anything that's private, but like, what's going on, well, man? Here, here, I'll just, just take a take a big step back. I mean, I'll be respectful of my conversations with both those guys. And, and you know, let's just take the big takeaways in terms of where we are right now. And, you know, you bring up two people who I think do embody a lot of that founding spirit, people who yes. can achieve something with their own dedication and with their own willpower without feeling constrained. I think that's part of why I've frankly had, I think a, a, a relatively fast and warm and natural friendship with both those guys is that part of what we miss in our culture is that right now you're told to shut up and sit down and do as you're told and, and work in your lane. Whereas our founding fathers were people who didn't believe in those lanes, right? You could be an inventor of the Franklin stove while also signing the Declaration of Independence while also working on a remedy to a common cold. If you're Donald Trump, I'm going to start a social media platform that's a competitor after having been a real estate tycoon, going on to be the president of the United States. And actually, you know what? If I want to do some sneakers along the way, I'm going to do it. If you're going to be Elon Musk, you know, from electric cars to, to going in space to actually expressing his own opinion about what's happened in the border crisis in the United States. I'm not going to just swim in my own lane because I'm a person who transcends those boundaries. I'm wired in my own in my own way the same way. You know, just because I'm a biotech entrepreneur today doesn't mean I'm not going to be an entrepreneur competing against a different incumbent like BlackRock. Doesn't mean it's going to stop me from running for president of the United States. That's the founding spirit we need to revive. That's what Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin and George Washington did. And I think that you see some of that in the likes of Elon Musk and Donald Trump in, in today's environment. And 
you know, I think it's a good thing when we live in a 1776 moment to have some 1776 figures who can step into that vacuum. And, uh, and I love what each of those guys is doing. They're doing their part. I'm going to try to do mine. And, uh, you know what? I think that we're going to win the American revolution in spirit. We don't have to fight the revolution. We have to just revive the ideals of it. That's the work we have cut out ahead of us this year. And I think both those guys are going to be important in making it happen and i'm gonna do whatever i can too i mean i think donald trouble looked great in a powdered wig i uh, <laughs> quote me on that all right this is one man's opinion okay uh joy reed has stolen his haircut so maybe <laughs> maybe switch it up you know right like maybe to get the powder she's, she's maybe she's pulling the founding father thing too although i don't know if that's exactly what she's going for <laughs> <laughs> two founding fathers in to the renaissance of the founding fathers in donald trump and elon musk Something that you have paraphrased before, but I think something that is a, a, a really um, profound uh, way of looking lo way of looking at our current landscape. It's revolutionary, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, and we thank you so much for being on our live tonight. We'll see, you, man. Thank you.